And um, I just, I, if you don't mind, I'd love you to continue and share with us some of the principles that you have gained from reading the story and understanding the times of, of, of what Deborah was living in. So tell us what the Lord's been thank talking you. to you about, Teresa. Well, I thank you for the opportunity because um, I... <laughs> I laughingly say my heart is so full, like, how long is your program? I could be here for a while. Um, and it's so it. ironic. It's just a short chapter uh, in Judges chapter four. And um, of course, chapter five is poetry, one of the oldest recorded um, pieces of poetry in scripture of a song after the fact of the victory. But, um, you know, you were talking about um, the young girl that wasn't chosen in the 18 and that you're oh, reconnected with that. her and what happened to her and the trafficking and um, how dark, you know, it just makes my spirit so dark when we talk about the reality of, of that and the reality of our world right now just feels like just darkness, you know, covering the earth um, with COVID and everything. And then the political unrest, the civil unrest, there's just so much all at once. And I know that we're living in, uh, I, I call it like um, the last of the last days because we're living in a lot of the warnings that Jesus allowed us to know about all at once. It's not just one warning um, and then many years pass and you see the earthquakes and many years pass and then there's floods and many years pass. It's, no, it's like all together. One, <laughs> all together right? And so in Judges, I feel like that the Lord led me to this um, two years ago, I was awakened in the middle of the night between the hours of 3 a.m. and 6 a.m. And I had just simply heard the voice, Deborah. I heard a voice wake me up out of a deep sleep, Deborah. And uh, I heard it three times. And on the third time, it was getting closer to 5.30, 6 o'clock. I was like, okay, Lord, I, I hear you. I, I'm, I'm awake. I reached for my Bible and I found her in Judges 4. I'm like, okay, what do you want me to see in this? And so reading the chapter was one thing, but it was about a month later. Uh, I shared this with the last program that I realized, yes, he wanted me to find her in the pages of scripture, but he was calling me to the Deborah mantle. And that's wow. why I feel like you said when you spoke about her, it was like living, breathing, because I feel like I had to walk out very similar circumstances um, in my own life for a good year or more. And the Lord made me hold this message until I lived it. Wow. And so I, wow. I've literally lived this. And then um, in September, uh, over the summer, I wrote this into a Bible study format. And then in September, I introduced the Bible study um, with women in our community, our church and our community. And uh, we, we did like a six session Bible study over five weeks. And I, I thought, how um, just like God, would it be that he brought this to me two years ago, made me hold it and birthed it right at the same time that Amy Barrett was being um, interviewed and selected for Supreme Court judge. <laughs> and I just thought that was so um, cool. Wow. And wow. that she... Mother of seven, two adopted children from Haiti. So anyway, there's a lot of correlation in that while we were going through it. But I think the one thing um, I have found in some of the things that I had to live through was through Deborah. There's not a lot of details about her, but we are given enough to where if you dig enough, you can really find um, the person or the uh, behind the mantle of Deborah and. Her name, for example, um, means B. And, and then the Bible tells us right on that she was a prophetess, a wife, and she was holding court. Now, we don't know how she got selected to hold court as a judge, but we know that she was a prophetess, potentially a wife of a man named Lapidoth, which his name means torches, um, and that she was judging Israel at the time when she Amazing. shows up on the um, but what I was going to say about how you were telling me about the dark, like trafficking and our world being dark, this was exactly in the period, what was going on in the days of Deborah. As a matter of fact, the very last verse in the last chapter 
of uh, Judges 21 summarizes the whole period of Judges like this. And it just says, in those days, there was no king in Israel and everyone did what was right in his own eyes. In their own eyes. My God, yes. that's today. Okay. When there's no king, there's no rule. And so same in your heart. When there's no king in your heart, there is no rule. You have no self-control. You just do what is right mm -hmm. in your own eyes. And it just is a reflection of our society. That, Everyone you know, does. Uh, the, 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 the theme I hear today all the time is, this is my truth. Don't you, don't yeah. you interfere with yeah. my truth. And, um, so, you know. What happens when your truth hurts me? Yeah. It, you know, it says, don't interfere with my truth. But what happens when my truth devastates you and yeah. others and it's just, and that's what's happening in our world you know that we uh in israel god never intended for the law to be separated from his precepts and his ways you know he, he meant for it to only work that way um and he gave us a great foundation for that i feel like the united states is like israel jr <laughs> you know that we we're founded upon godly principles. And, you know, a lot of times in That's reading, true. like judges, kings and things like that, and all the prophetic things, uh, I read it as though the United States is like an Israel junior. But That's a good, anal so, That's a good uh, analogy. Yeah. And so That's now, true. you know, I'm looking at where we are and how we got here and that I feel like we are where we are as a country, um, as a people, because there has been a great falling away. Um, when you don't have a, a godly leader, people have no king, but there is no rule. <laughs> and um, and of course you can't blame it just on one leader. I mean, you it, it's filtered all the way down. It's a domino effect of even to leadership in the home through godly parents and being a godly person. Mm -hmm. And just, um, and, and, and this cycle in the book of Judges, we we can just see it in our own person. Uh, it's just a whole book of cycles of falling away from, from God, being given over to oppression by foreign leaders for the purpose of bringing them into such hardship that they will cry out to God. And of course, when they did, he always sent a deliverer and a judge which would help them fight military battles to free them again. And it was just one cycle after another. Well, um, mm. Deborah shows up on the scene after the third judge Ehud had died. And um, once again, it says, it says once again, they repeated their cycle of doing evil in the eyes of God. They had fallen away from God's precepts and commandments. Um, we have a, a, a I don't know what you want to call it, but it, it, it's just sort of a, a banner or a, that we live by through Fellow Community Church that we pastor. And it's LG, LEO, loving God, loving each other. Yeah. Because that truly summarizes everything in the book. You know, everything in the Word of God can be completely taken in with love God and love each other. And I find yes. that when there's a great falling away, it's, it's, that you become, you fall away from that. You one know, of loving those, God. One of those two things fail, and that's when, yeah, so that's when trouble. Yeah, and uh, yeah, that's that's profound. That's so true. So true. It is. It is. And and so it, it just doesn't take long when you fall away from that or grow cold from either one. Mainly loving God, because you can't do the other without that. That's your your yeah. foundational one. But, um, but those two things are affected when we do fall away from God's precepts and his ways and his word and our hearts grow cold toward him or we become lazy or complacent. Um, then quickly our, our foreign enemies, which would be lust, greed, all those things that come in quickly and take us over and oppress us. And then we get trapped and in bondage. And then sooner or later, we just get so miserable that we cry out to God to rescue us. And he quickly comes on the scene. He always yeah. does. And then brings a deliverer or a judge through the voice of a prophet, through a voice of a pastor, a friend, a godly person that shows up, that brings the word for rescue and deliverance and help. Mm -hmm. Just like God using you as a, a type of judge or deliverer for all these kids in Moldova. You know, you mm -hmm. come in to rescue them 
from this darkness and you, you do it practically, but spiritually. And that's why I believe they're truly becoming world changers because you're not just meeting their physical need, but they're, you're giving them a phys you're meeting physical needs, but giving them Christ. Yep. And one cannot truly free them without the other, you know, 